Good day, I'm Brian Farrell, and welcome to Pace IT's session on Troubleshooting Wireless Networks, Part 1. Today I'm going to be talking about configuration issues, and then we will conclude with some other issues. There's a fair amount of information to go over, so let's go ahead and begin this session. I will begin by talking about some common configuration issues. While wireless networks are a huge convenience to users, they do introduce a new set of troubleshooting issues into the network. Not only do the standard issues that crop up in a wired network need to be considered, the added layer of complexity that adding a wireless access point brings to the table will also need to be considered. When wireless networking is brought into the mix, a very solid troubleshooting methodology becomes just that much more critical. Now on to the actual configuration issues. First up is the Service Set Identifier Configuration, or the SSID configuration. When this is an issue, the major symptom is that the user is unable to connect to the wireless network and the probable cause is an SSID mismatch. The corrective measure is to check that the SSIDs match exactly. Remember, they are case sensitive. Then there is encryption configurations. It has the same symptom as the SSID misconfiguration. The user is unable to connect to the wireless network. Probable cause is an encryption type mismatch or incorrect security key. The possible corrective measure is to check the encryption settings on the wireless access point and on the device to make sure they are the same. Another configuration issue that can cause problems is an incorrect channel or overlapping wireless channels. The symptom is that the user is unable to connect or the wireless network has very poor performance. The probable cause is either incorrect channels or the overlapping channels is causing the signal to noise ratio to be reduced. That's the SNR. The possible corrective measure include adjusting the WAP settings and device settings so that they're using the same channel. Hint, there are only three available non-overlapping channels on the 2.4 gigahertz radio frequency. Then there are incompatibilities. And the symptom is, again, the user is not able to connect to the wireless network. The probable cause is you have an 802.11a device being used in an environment in which it won't work, as in you're using 802.11g or n. Or there is a frequency mismatch between the wireless access point and the devices. The possible corrective measure is to make sure you're using equipment with compatible wireless standards. Untested updates can also cause a configuration issue. The symptom again is the user is unable to connect or there is poor performance. The probable cause is a conflict between the update and other configuration settings or the wireless network settings. The possible corrective measure is to roll back the system to the prior configuration. Here's another hint. It is a best practice to make a backup copy of a system before installing any updates. Let's move on to other wireless issues. Troubleshooting networks requires a combination of art and science. Some of the best tools in your arsenal will be patience and strategic thinking. Network issues can express themselves in a multitude of ways. One of the best things that you, as a technician, can do is to see if you can recreate the problem. An issue that can be recreated can usually be resolved easily. Also remember that the users you are dealing with are the reason that you have a paycheck. Treat them as you would like to be treated even if it is the 10th time that you've reminded Bob that his username and password are case sensitive. Interference is a common issue on wireless networks. The symptoms include slow performance and or intermittent drops. The probable causes can include overlapping channels, walls, or other equipment that operates in the same frequencies. Some possible corrective measures include changing the RF channel, 
or frequency or adjusting the wireless access point placement. Then there's poor signal strength. The symptoms include slow performance and or intermittent drops, especially towards the end of your wireless network coverage area. Probable causes include low RF power settings, antenna type, and or the placement of the access point. Possible corrective measures include changing the RF power setting, as in increasing it, or adjusting the antenna and or WAP placement. There is a caution here. Increasing your radio frequency power or adjusting the equipment placement may cause the signal to go where it was not intended to go. So if you do either of those, you need to check and make sure that you're not putting your signal where you don't want it to be. Bandwidth or device saturation can also become an issue. The symptoms include slow performance and or intermittent drops. The probable cause is that there are too many users or applications for the available bandwidth. Possible corrective measures include increasing the number of wireless access points and or changing to a wireless standard with more throughput. The wrong antenna type may also become an issue. The symptoms include low or no signal in an area or signal in an area where it is not supposed to be. The probable cause is the wrong antenna type for the coverage. The corrective measure would be to change to an antenna type to suit the required coverage. Then there is signal bounce. The symptom is poor performance in unexpected locations or an unexpected wireless network signal in an area that was not intended to be covered. The probable cause is the RF signal bouncing off of a hard object. The possible corrective measure would be to adjust the wireless access point placement. That concludes this session on troubleshooting wireless networks part one. I talked about configuration issues, and then I moved on to some other wireless network issues. On behalf of Pace IT, thank you for watching this session, and I hope you watch another one soon.